that's what's more fun for me. I spent most of my life as Jim Carrey is one of the world's best comedians, and professionally and personally, he's been right up there at the highs and really low. But as a star, he's remained right up there in that upper echelon. He's given us some of comedy's great one-liners. In fact, some of them become part of pop culture's vernacular. Love him or loathe him, you cannot ignore Jim Carrey. Jim Carrey has had a lifelong affair with the mirror. From an early age, the youngest of four kids had to compete for attention and he'd used the mirror to help perfect his specialty impersonations of animals and stars, people like John Wayne and Jack Nicholson. Jim was forced to grow up quickly when his dad lost his job and the whole family had to go and live and work at a local factory. Jim would go to school, then pull eight hours of cleaning at night, which gradually led to him dropping out of school due to severe exhaustion. After a miserable year, the family called it quits and went to live in a tent on the front lawn of his older sister Pat's place. During this tough time, Jim, supported by his dad, who was himself something of a funny man, began doing stand-up at local clubs, driven by the desire for a better life for him and his family. I've always been into comedy since I was a little kid. I, since I can remember, I've always wanted to be a comedian. When I was a little kid, I, I sent away to a computer program uh, that you could uh, you could send away to 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 see all the things that you needed to do to to, to select a or to uh, ready yourself for a profession, and uh, so I sent away for a comedian, and uh, you know it came back like reams of paper came back, and all it said was make funny faces and make people laugh, and that's basically what I'm doing, uh -huh. you know. So they were right, but they didn't tell me how to do it, but uh, <laughs> you know so. I put on shows in the basement and, you know, entertained the company every time somebody came over. You know, my, my parents were completely into it. They loved it. An ambitious move to L.A. saw him focus on film auditions as well as his stand-up. And soon he was acting in bit parts on the big screen. He crossed paths with Damon Wyans on Earth Girls Are Easy, who then recommended him to his brother Keenan who then cast Jim as the only white cast member in the groundbreaking sketch comedy show In Living Colour. The show was a hit, but after three seasons, Jim was moving on to bigger and better things. He agreed to take the lead in a big Hollywood picture, provided he could rewrite the script to suit his over-the-top vision. The film was Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. I hated the script. I, 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 dis I, I didn't like the script at all. And uh, they came after me for about two years trying to get me to do the movie. And then finally they came to me and said, you can rewrite it from page one, completely change it. You know, so I sat down with Tom Shadiak and I, and I uh, completely rewrote everything. There's not one word from the original script. The film was the perfect vehicle for Kerry's distinctive brand of physical humour. Critics weren't overly impressed, but that doesn't matter because audiences flocked to the theatres to the tune of $125 million, transforming Carey into a bankable box office star. Jim firmly established his clout in The Mask, playing an oversexed, egotistical cartoon superhero. Jim followed The Mask with a third box office winner, Dumb and Dumber. The Farrelly Brothers picture further showcased Jim's ability for lowbrow physical comedy and also landed him in the gossip columns for his whirlwind romance and marriage to co-star Lauren Holly. That saw them divorced within the year. Professionally, however, Jim was still on the up. He landed the role of the Riddler in Batman Forever opposite Big Gun's Val Kilmer and Nicole Kidman. So what was the biggest challenge on the big budget flick? The director? The egos flying around? No, his wardrobe, a fetching lycra onesie. I thought, stay away from craft service, we'll be okay, you know? More push-ups, more sit-ups. I thought I looked a lot like Michelle Pfeiffer, actually. Continuing his hot streak, the inevitable sequel, Ace Ventura, When Nature Calls, opened to a record-breaking $40 million at the box office on its opening weekend. All righty then. Yeah, I can't do it. 
With four certified blockbusters to his name, Jim Carrey had established himself as one of the highest paid actors in Hollywood, certainly the highest paid comedic actor. He scored $20 million for the black comedy The Cable Guy, which was a marked departure for Jim, and audiences didn't come along for the ride, leaving it as Carrey's first real career dip. The following year, Liar Liar restored Carrey's luster with another Golden Globe nomination and a huge box office take, more than $180 million. This time, Jim's role was more sophisticated, mixing up his usual rubber-faced antics with convincing sincerity, an indication of his growing desire to explore more dramatic territory, something he'd always wanted and had studied and strived towards during those early stages of his career. Years ago, I quit for two years and I studied acting and I didn't do stand-up and I didn't do, uh, uh, you know, I didn't do any parts. And, uh, you know, it just came out in different directions. I started painting and I started making figurines and things like that. And I realized at that point that it's a disease that I can't help. You know, it's going to come out one way or the other. Yeah. So. I might as well be doing what I love to do and pouring the creativity into that. You know, otherwise it'll be like, you know, uh, you know, in my, you know, I can make my gun really pretty, you know? <laughs> you know. Around this time, there seemed to be a public split regarding Jim Carrey. The lovers and the haters. Something Jim happily recognized. This movie kind of threw a wrench into that whole thing, so some some people are now there's another group of the like, well, I like them sometimes. Exactly. You know? That's yeah. what this movie does. Because yeah. We have two groups. Which is okay. Group together. You know, it's like, you know, I'm not a megalomaniac. I don't need everybody in the world to love me, but, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, just a good portion. Jim got his opportunity for more dramatic fare with The Truman Show. Under the expert direction of Peter Weir, Jim gave an impressively disciplined performance as Truman Burbank whose life has been broadcast as a 24-hour-a-day TV show. This change of pace performance earned him a Golden Globe Award. And the winner is... Jim Carrey! I think life is a series of uh, challenges and breakthroughs, you know. It's, uh, that's what's so great about this film. It's really symbolic of that. It's symbolic of uh, the idea that along throughout your life you're going to be, you know, faced with times when you can either uh, choose to do what you love, choose to uh, choose real love, or, uh, or you can sit and be complacent and uh, think that everything's okay or convince yourself that everything's okay. And, uh, and it's, I've had about probably three periods of my life where I've, you know, gone into the abyss and the unknown and not known exactly how it was gonna turn out, but trusted and believed in miracles. Fresh from his Golden Globes triumph, Jim campaigned heavily for the part of enigmatic comedian Andy Kaufman in Man on the Moon. The biopic offered the best of both worlds. As a wildly inventive Kaufman, Carey could exercise his genius while at the same time inhabiting the tortured soul of the late comic. For his portrayal of the complex character, Jim earned his second Golden Globe award, which he accepted in his own unique way. You can't shoot a man with a gun, with a gun, with a gun. He reunited with the Farrelly brothers for Me, Myself and Irene, which saw Jim revert to his usual lunacy and gross-out fare. He also hooked up with his leading lady, Renee Zellweger, and they embarked on a year-and-a-half-long romance. In one of Jim's finest performances and most rewarding projects, Kerry teamed up with the uber-hip director, Michelle Gondry, and notorious screenwriter Charlie Kaufman for the film Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. He was supported by Kate Winslet in classic free spirit mode. And despite the indie film not being a commercial blockbuster, it was easily the best attempt to tap both the actors' considerable serious and comedic talents. Though Jim's high expectations of himself would never quite be satisfied. I myself can't tell sometimes what's right and what's wrong. I, 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 I sit back and look at it and um, I realize that the takes that I thought were so beautiful and genuine and perfect are not real at all. And the ones where I, I, where I thought I lost my place look so spontaneous and wonderful. It's a very disquieting place to live. 
you know, when you, you come off camera, you're never satisfied, basically. Jim was back to his family-friendly fare with Lemony Snicket's A Series of Unfortunate Events and Horton Hears a Who. He dabbled in the psychological drama, The Number 23. Then he was back doing what he does best as the star of the comedy, Yes Man. Though his commitment to the role had studio execs worried. There were a lot of stunts, a lot of kind of hairy little situations I had to get into that I had to say yes to. And, uh, but I'm kind of up for that. I like that. I like getting a little bit close to it, you know. Uh, certainly there was the jumping off the, the uh, what they call suicide bridge in Pasadena. Uh, and uh, that was my doing. The movie company did not want me to do that. They, uh, they were totally against it. The producers were against it. I said, but if I am doing a movie called Yes Man, I want there to be something that I do that transcends the movie into my real life. Jim took on multiple roles in Disney's 3D, A Christmas Carol as Scrooge and the ghosts of past, present and future. Then kept on with the family theme in the winning Mr. Popper's Penguins, where he admitted he has quite a crush on these unusual and adorable flightless birds. Uh, they're pure energy. I think, you know, I, I, I really tried to figure it out. Why do I love penguins so much? What is it about them that makes me free, feel free when I see them? And I think it's because they're such oddballs, you know? They don't really belong anywhere. They don't, they don't you know, they don't belong in the water. They're not fish, and they're not really birds, and they don't fly, and it's kind of like me, you know, sometimes. I feel like I don't fit anywhere, and yet I'm everywhere. Jim Carrey's built his career out of entertaining audiences, particularly teenagers and kids. He knows the value of family, and after years of struggle and misfortune, has kept them close, never letting showbiz get in the way of what he values most in life. Well, whenever anything was going on in my family, whenever I felt any sort of deficit, I would literally quit show business. So that's where I stand. Look, there's no denying that Jim Carrey is absolutely one of the world's premier comedians, but the thing is, he's also doing a fair bit of serious work these days. He may just be following his fellow clown, Robin Williams, into the world of serious acting. But I think either way, whether it's comedy or drama, we're going to see a lot more of Jim Carrey in the years to come. Stay with us here at Star Picks for all the movies you know and the actors you love. Broadcast in high definition with 5.1 surround sound where available. For more of the best in entertainment news, check out your movie network channels. Find or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube and mnc.tv.